Hey, welcome to Hammered Ironworks. I'm Dave. This, this is Dave's broken plow. Dave got up at oh dark 30 this morning, went plowing and decided to get just a little bit too throttle happy and took this 1200 pound, nine and a half foot wide V plow and busted it in two. I mean, honestly, it's still work on a four wheeler just this half, but I don't know as to whether I'm gonna be really buying a new one or fixing this one. Wait a minute. I can't even afford pants. Guess I'm gonna fix this one. Here we go, let's look her over and see what I'm up against. So this morning this all happened when I snubbed up on an ice bank and it looks like I bent this pin that goes right down through the middle and then the bottom piece of it fell out. My neighbor sent me a picture of what he found in his driveway. Seeing this carnage right here makes me believe that I might even have some bent ears right here where they go together. Yeah, I'm quite sure. You probably can't see in the video, but I can see it. Let's look around the back side and see as to what all is taking place. It looks as though, like, when it broke, we actually all broke the end of the ear off of this ram. So, you know, that's anti-good. So, I guess I gotta start figuring out how to work on this stuff. I'm not really a plowologist but it's time to become one. So a lot of people have asked, how did you break your plow? And I can think of no better way than to demonstrate it on a scale model. Now I spared no expense on this. So as you can see, I've got us our scale size F250. That's F for freshetta. So what I like to do is I push some of the snow. Push the snow up to the bank right here. Then, I come in from this angle. And push the snow up the bank. But here's where it went wrong. As I was pushing the snow into the bank right here, all of a sudden, ah, I broke, ah, ooh, oh. It died a horrible death. So step one is to take this cap off so I can get the pin up and out of here, but the issue is, is the blade is skipped up and over this cap, and well, yeah, so that kind of slows progress. Whatever. Winning! So we can assess a little bit better, but I'm pretty sure you can even make out the situation. This right here is bent that way. It's supposed to go straight up and down. You know, we got trubs. So we missed the cool stuff because I didn't hit record, but I just basically cut the pin out of right here. And that's part of the pin. There's another part laying around somewhere. Anyway. This right here is bent, so I gotta determine if I can heat that up and bring it back right around, and then I think I actually see a crack right here, which I'll have to weld in if it is salvageable. Obviously, I need a new pin, and I gotta do something about that right there, because that's not good. A little bit of carnage. So after that pin broke, obviously it bent the top here, and you can see I've got a new pin and she doesn't even come anywhere as close to lining up with really anything. So I can't even, these got a, we got a lot of play in these holes, it won't even like move over enough to line up. So now is, I think this is where the fun actually just started. Oh yeah, she's freaking, boy, she just 
Ben's easy. So I'm pretty sure that this is kind of an important measurement. So we got to be about 10 inches, I would say. And I am definitely bigger. So it's time to go a little bit further. So after some adult rated language, I was able to get the pin in far enough to know the alignment will work. I mean, this is basically like a guy I work with says, farm equipment. So I think it's gonna be all right. You see a crack I've got here, I can take and weld that in and make that pure, but I think I've got it pretty parallel here. I mean, ultimately, I'm happy with that. Now I've gotta make the outsides of that hole, the frame basically for the headgear. I need to make this straight so it will go on the outside right there and then right there. That's going to take some doing. So the goal here is to take this eyelet right here, which is all cattywampus, to get that to actually now like be spaced out, bent straight, so it goes over the outside of those two. At least that's the goal. She's a little bit wonky. This is far from success, but if these outer horns fit on the outside of these from this wing, and then these inner horns from this wing fit on the inside of here from the center pin and this wing and stuff, then I mean, hey, all is good there. Obviously still gotta weld up cracks, and then lube things up, paint it, because we don't want our neighbors to see rust. Oh no. Okay, so a solid wind getting the pin in. Next thing to do is actually get this ram to hopefully be a ram once again with an eyelet on the end. Well, this is hard to do while I'm filming, but I think you get the idea. That sort of goes there. So I've got to sort of V out the edges, weld that together. I'm not sure this is really going to be a repair, but I'm so cheap. I mean, I just gotta try it. I don't wanna go buy a new one of these rams. I'm sure they don't give them away, they're like 10, 15, 20 bucks, or one more. But, you know, Dave rhymes with cheap, I think.
Okay, so that weld is ugly, but functional. Kind of like me. Hopefully she'll go together and fit in the cavity, but I'm thinking it will. There's plenty of room in there. We're gonna find out here in just a second, hopefully. Ha <laughs> ha! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So it's all together right now. I still gotta weld in some cracks, but I think it's gonna be easier to put it on my truck, move it to the front of the shop, get my truck in for the night, and then I'm gonna weld it up tomorrow because I've had a long day. But all in all, things are looking pretty savable. Okay, next day, I'm all changed up, ready to weld. I gotta weld a little bit, you know, Zeus a little bit in, throw some lightning and sparks at it. Then I gotta test it, see how it works, if it goes up, down, left, right, yada, yada, yada. And until we get the next snowstorm, I really won't know how rugged it is. It's a sad day. Somebody didn't have enough welding wire. But I've got a backup welder, so I'll go buzz in the last couple welds with that. So, I gotta clean up so I can weld that in right there, clean up that rust. Getting in there is actually pretty easy when you use one of these little, uh, carbide burrs. It's really hard to get a grinder in there to try to clean that up, but this burr, that'll make short work of that powder coat and rust, and then I get a weld in there. So we've got a uh, not so beautiful weld there that's gonna hold them in. I got a little bit of a touch up here. Down here, I had a little crack, had to do a little something there. And whoop, right up in here, we got some ugliness. And that's where I ran out of wire. However, I think the cracks are fixed. Now it's time to put that little cap on that I took off in the beginning. Test her out. Time to prep it for paint. We use our eyeball bummer and some old skivvies. Hmm, finished product, or finished enough. It smells so good of that paint. Okay, I've been trying to find a way to prove to you and me, us, that this plow is gonna work. And Mother Nature's not really giving me the snow I need to do that. That's normally a good thing. Right now, I wanna prove it works. So I've been mind surfing. How can I actually prove this plow is as ready as it can be? without snow. So I've come up with a plan. We'll see if it works. Yeah. Welcome the first ever Maine Plow Riders Association competition. Yeah. She's invitational only, but yeah. We invite plow boys from all over the Northeast to come and ride these plows. What we got today is double eliminations been taking place all day. We only had one competitor. He come up through the loser's bracket. His name is Desperado Dave, weighing in at 
175 pounds worth of jackass in leather. Yep, my name's Desperado Dave. I like riding plows. I ain't never been a red one I couldn't ride eight seconds. Them red ones are junk. Them yellow plows up here in the northeast, and them's the best ones ever. I ain't never made a full eight seconds. Desperado Dave's gonna be going up against the northeastern heavyweight champ. Weighing in at 1,200 pounds, nine and a half feet wide, and his name's Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket, nine and a half feet, worth of real angry heavy steel. Got hydraulic fluid pumping through its veins. Ain't a rider this side of the Penobi that's been able to hang on for over seven seconds. Desperado Dave's in the house. Where's the yellow jacket? I'm gonna give him an eight second ride, right about now. Yeah, time for this plow boy to mount up. Yeah, I gotta rope her up good this time. That ought to do. Eight seconds, here we go. I done did it! Desperado Dave sure hopes you enjoyed this episode. Stay cheap, cheesy, and crafty. See you in the next episode.